to us a little bit about accountability. I, I sort of feel as if people think it's kind to remove accountability from people. Um, you know, someone will say something like, I'm not going to take them up on what they did wrong. Um, you know, it was probably just a glitch. What happens when we don't hold people accountable in organizations? First of all, we, we're never in a vacuum. Everybody, in fact, in today's working environment, what I do is invariably a component of what you do, you've done, uh, and, and you're going to do some work on that later on, and then somebody else is going to do some work later on. So if I don't perform either in quality or quantity or time, and I don't get held accountable, A, it slows the whole production line down or it shows the whole project down, which is unfair. And that invariably, that time needs to be made up if it's time and the quality isn't there, it also needs to be reworked. So now, if I've turned out bad quality, missed the timeline totally, and have got a bad attitude as a result of it, because I feel guilty and now I need to feel, um, I need to justify myself. If I'm not mm -hmm. held accountable, what message does it send to the rest of the team? You're actually punishing good performers. Mm -hmm. And you must never forget, out of your total people that work for you, they say, they who know everything, they say, only 30% are good performers. 50% of your workforce will do just enough just to get by and not to get fired and not to upset you. So if that poor performance comes out of the 50%, what does it say to the few, the 30 percenters, that, um, that perform well? Mm. We don't right. have to perform, but it gets overlooked, we don't have to perform. right? It's mm. overlooked and he makes allowances for everything. And the trouble is invariably what happens is the good performers then need to put in the extra work to make mm. up for the bad work or the untimely work uh, of the non-performing person. And that breeds resentment. Is that mm. the right team culture? Is that the right team environment? that you want to set. Accountability is part and parcel of being a, 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 a fully recognized team member. If you want to be on this team, if you want to be part in this family, I teach my grandkids that from, from early age. You've got to contribute. And if you say you're going to do it, I hold you to it. Mm. I have a famous saying, uh, it's very difficult to get a promise out of me because I think very carefully about can I do it and yes. I prefer to under promise and over deliver okay. wonderful so accountability for not holding people accountable accountable doesn't do them any favors mm -hmm. and in fact the, the non-performers and the performers basically get punished indeed and I think you and I have spoken about it before as well that it's Without the guidance of expectations and accountability, people go, oh, it must be fine because I'm not in trouble, which isn't really a management style either. You see, I often have this trick when I when I go to a new client or, or when I'm waiting for the boss and then I sit in that reception or and I said, hey, tell me, what's it like working here? It's one of my favorite questions. What does it mm -hmm. tell me? about the culture and about the environment. And then I say invariably, okay, so that, tell me, you're reporting directly to ABC, to Bill. What does Bill think of you? You know, the answer I would love to hear is to say, well, uh, Bill loves me, loves the work I do. Um, he knows I give it my best. I invariably deliver on time and at the quality. And when I'm not when I make a mistake, he doesn't chop my head off. He helps me to put it right. The answer I get more often than not is, I don't know. I suppose he's happy. I'm still here. And he hasn't shouted at me lately. Now, that's not performance management. No. Uh -huh. That brings me to another point. Mm. Because performance and performance management. Um, thank God I've never worked in a large corporate 
uh, they wouldn't have me. I won't fit in. But even in medium-sized companies that I work with, uh, they have some of them have an annual performance review. Now that to me is the biggest bull I have ever heard. Performance management means an interaction between coach, team leader, and team member on an ongoing basis. If you want to perform, you know how you perform. You don't mm. need me to tell you that you are failing mm. because you set high standards yourself. Mm. You want to perform. Right? I don't have to drive you to performance. And the right person is critical of their own performance. In fact, often the good coach builds confidence and competence mm. by saying, no, 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 you're not as bad. Yeah, it's okay to miss that one against the parlor, right? And yes, it was a critical one, but I'm not going to fire you and going to take you off the team because you missed that one, right? Because I have seen after the game, you went back again when everybody else was having a beer, uh, you were practicing. You see, and this is where I, 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 mm -hmm. performance is all about not practicing until you get it occasionally right, but practicing until you can't get it wrong. I love that. That will now be my quote of the year. I really, yeah. really like that. That's good. I, I heard that from the first time from Carlos Spencer when he was teaching, coaching Elton Yankees. And he said, we practice in rugby now. We practice until he can't get it wrong. Right? Wow. Until he slots them every time. And that's good performance. So if he misses, he doesn't need to be told by his team members or his team coach, listen, You've fluffed it, you know. Yes. yes. So um, I'd like to ask you a little bit about how do we manage the current work environment? Um, you and I have spoken about it a little bit where we we have a bit more of a relaxed environment and your, your, your leadership approach is more participative. So many managers are prepared or, or not prepared to go there because they confuse freedom in the team with people not doing work, people being careless, people not not taking a care. How do we well, know how to deal with that? Again, I want to talk about myself in the old days, in my young years, in my ignorant young years, when I was made myself a leader when I wasn't ready. Right? So uh, leadership and management needs to be worked and and so you have to grow your managers from an early age and culture is a most important part of this leadership development bringing up growing young leaders and culture is, is a fancy word for the way we do things around here now again going back when i in my when I was 30, 35, inexperienced young leader with too much responsibility, doing it all wrong, if I heard people laughing, if I saw people together having a cup of coffee together, I said, what's wrong here? Haven't they got work to do? Right? And, and to me, in my stupid way, it was, if you work, you knuckle down and you buckle down and, and that's it. Now, any normal person knows you can't do that for eight hours a day. You do need a break and a good laugh. Now, think about yourself. I find I do my best when I'm happy. Now, this is a total change to when I was previously in my young years of boss. And I loved one of your interviews that you had with that young lady who said, work shouldn't suck. I think it was so, so great. And I have shown it to all my coaching members and said, listen here, this is a message we need to get across more than enough. Um, it's, it's a great phrase. Work shouldn't suck. Work should be fun. And if I'm having fun, I'm doing well, right? If it's a grudge, if it's a grind, yes, sometimes we have to grind out a victory, right? But if that's a norm, you won't last, right? So it comes back to culture and and we have to perform. But the how, the how, 
is entirely up to you. And that's the change in leadership approach. We used to not only just say what we wanted to achieve, but we used to tell them also how we, they needed to achieve it. And that's the young, that shouldn't be necessary for the young generation if you've chosen the right people. If they're learning, yes, teach them the how. Right? That's part and parcel. But if they know their job, let them decide the how. Let them decide uh, how they split their time. There will be some that totally zoom out. Right? And they work for an hour or two in a block, and that's their way of working. There will be others that says, I can't keep my attention for longer than 30 or 40 minutes. I then need a break. Okay. As long as you then don't interfere with that person who is focused or that team and you set the whole company alight while everybody is, other people are concentrating, those are ground rules. So I think with, I mean, I heard the other day uh, an interview with Hastings of Netflix and he says, we give a lot of freedom. But we have ground rules. And one of the ground rules is, is it good for our company? And is it good for our company culture? If that this is. behavior, mm -hmm. if is your behavior good in sync with our values and our behavior, the way we behave here, if that's, if you think so, and I don't think so, we better have a chat about it. But invariably, invariably, a good team will sort that stray or misbehaving team member out themselves. You don't have to do that. You've got the right team environment. A new person, let's say they didn't quite, haven't quite got it. They'll nudge him into it. You don't have to be the taskmaster with a big whip. I think we're so scared of letting go. Now, I have quite a bit of corporate experience. So I have, uh, I had the slave driver mentality to the point where I was at one point demoted in a company for, for driving people too hard. So, so your, your examples are, are very practical and real. I'm sure there's something I was supposed to ask you that you as a coach know is important. Everyone should know. What do you want to tell us? Well, to me, to me, uh, people judge performance as if it was a match. So how many tries did you score? How many goals did you shoot? How many, how many um, tries did you convert? It's not only that. It's also about how you achieved it. Are you fun to work with? I remember one guy who was a very, very good sales manager, but he was such in the pain and the butt to work with that in the end, his performance was not good enough. His numbers were right, but it was he was poisoned to the team. So the correct, the high performance team, the high performing team, they choose their members. So don't dump a person into that. So if they have chosen the member, they take joint responsibility with whom they allow into this or onto this high performing team. And guess what? If that person doesn't perform, you don't have to fire that person. The team will fire that person. Mm -hmm. And where the mistake is often made is when you try to recruit a person that you really want because invariably you've wanted him for the skill. And that's another mistake. High performance teams don't get created purely on skill basis. Skill is the entry ticket. But it's their ability to fit in and work as team members that makes them or breaks them. And it makes or breaks the team. And that's why the team members, when they interview him, they will ask, tell that person, listen here, this is acceptable behavior. This is not. We trust each other. And trust means we don't lie. We put our, one of our ground rules is that we must have complete trust. If you say you have done it, I don't need to see it because mm -hmm. I trust you. Now, that is the core of a high performance team. The right team members with the right culture, which means trusting mm. relationship. So if you let me down and you didn't raise your hand, I was relying on you doing that by 12 o'clock. I have spoken to you beforehand. You mm. don't wait till five minutes to 12 and then say, I can't. Mm. Mm. Right? But again, let me say the last word that I started with. 
it's always the leader. It's not them that are not performing. It's you, the team leader. If your team doesn't perform, you've got to fix it. And you ask the team how to fix it. Mm. So. That is that is so true. It's so interesting. I remember watching a movie very many years ago. <clears throat> you know, I'm only 16, so it couldn't have been that long ago. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Laughing you look at it. Where they said, I, th I don't know if it was the Navy SEALs or the Marines or something, and they said, there isn't a bad team. There's just bad leaders. And exactly. you're right. You're right. It's it's about taking that accountability. So, wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing uh, with us your thoughts on on how leadership has changed and where we where we need to become more human and more accessible and and actually set up everyone it seems for success i think that's the message i was getting is set your Absolutely. team up for success it's about them not about you thank you so much for joining um i know that you don't often take on new work because you have enough but if anyone should want to reach you is there an email address where they can find you coach at the boardroom now the boardroom should not be um uh, mistaken for the boardroom I found out afterwards in Cape Town, which is actually a strip joint, right? <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> I don't know whether they in COVID times still operate, but we are a learning circle. I do have a website, uh, but I only take on so many people. I work with them on an ongoing basis, so it's not a project coaching. I've worked mm -hmm. with some for 10 years. You could say I'm a bad coach, that they still need me. Yes, uh, I'll take that one on the nose. <laughs> I think it's I think it's part code, part part mentoring. So that takes that takes a, a totally different slant. But thank, thank you, you so much, Wolf. Really appreciate having you here today, and I look forward to hopefully having another opportunity soon. Pleasure. And uh, if I have helped some young person or medium aged person, well, when you're seventy four, everybody is young. Everybody oh, else yeah. is young. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Will. So, everyone, uh, another lovely interview. We are so spoiled for the people that we get to speak to on the Performance Cafe. Uh, I'd like to thank Will for his contribution and his precious time. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time also to watch this with us today. Um, and then, as always, you can find the recording on YouTube and you can subscribe, I think the button's about here, to our channel. If you found us on LinkedIn or on um, Facebook, please like and comment and share as much as you can. And then I look forward to seeing you again at the Performance Cafe.